Welcome back to Let's Play Darkest Dungeon. I'm your host, Time Pants, and today we haven't been to the ruins for a while, so why don't we go? And we haven't had a Houndmaster for a while, so why don't we do one of those, too? Now this, I think, looks a little bit more like a party we can be proud of. Now look at this. Now, I don't want to say that I have I've completely solved it here. I do think that that Arbalest was just a master stroke. I really do think that was the last real puzzle piece that we needed to 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 fit somewhere on the jigsaw puzzle area but i really feel like that kind of that kind of put us that put us in a good position here so oh only two torches what are you doing time pants well i'll tell you i've been promising one of these uh, darkness runs for a long time and my agent's going to kill me if I don't, if I don't follow through, you know my uh, YouTube manager has uh, really been pushing hard for some of this, some of this darkness content. You know the edgy stuff the kids like. I guess kids, you know, like really young kids are, are my main audience. Uh, they're talking like two or three, you know, kids, uh, two or three year old kids, you know, whose parents uh, just gave them the iPad and said, "Go for it." That's my, I mean, that's my primary audience. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what necessarily brought them here. I, I think it is my soothing, motherly tone of voice that really sort of speaks to that demographic. But as you can see here, look at that. We are, we're loaded for bear here. We're going hard on this, this darkness run. And we're going to hopefully encounter us a, uh, what am I thinking here? I, th I hope we're going to run into... One of these, I hate that. I hope we're going to run into these new, one of these new mini bosses. It stands to reason that the just pure statistics, the more that we throw ourselves into into the, one of these nasty dungeon type scenarios, the more likely it is that we're going to run into one of them. And we're going to be prepared when we do. If we encounter, hmm, if we encounter one of these, uh, yeah, you know, one of these scenarios where we are. You know where we're we're in a good shape, uh, in a good shape. I'm thinking like a rhombus. Now, if we're in a good shape, I did it again. If we're in good shape, when we encounter one of these shambler shrines, I want to actually take advantage of it. And here's the synergy that I love. Here's what I think really makes this party stand out: cry havoc, because we're all about trading stress for damage. But if we have a houndmaster, we can, we can tick some of that stress off. Hey, I feel like we've we've got a good idea here. I feel like we have something we can work with. So that's that's the idea. That's the goal. And we're gonna see right now how that works out. So right now I'm feeling like I probably should have taken my swing back here with yeah I feel like I should have taken my swing back here with um a a, an occultist, by the way, I just realized is named Mortimer. We have a deceased Mortimer, so of course we can't have that. That's just, it's, the wound is still too fresh. So we just need to rename our hero here, and we're going to rename him, of course, Mortimer. There we go. We we're not going to get confused now, and that's very respectful, uh, both to the living and the dead. So I feel like that is just the last last good luck charm we need to ensure that we have a good run here. But I like this. Nobody's really stepping on each other's toes in terms of their row. We have lots of scouting. This is... This makes me unhappy. I don't like this. This is potentially a very very bad encounter uh, made slightly more palatable by the fact that we have miraculously gotten away with uh, with dodging that however I think I think this is the end of the road here what is that um, there's no no actual oh that that does do damage I think we go for it there we go that was not a guaranteed hit at all I don't like Han Solo, never tell me the odds, but uh, something, something in my belly says, probably not good. We need to get her back in the front row. 
How are we going to do this? I mean, next term, I guess... Next term? I mean, I know this battle's going to be long, but I don't think it's going to draw out for a whole semester. I think we just move him back, like so. Now he's in healing position. And now we puppy guard. Who do we puppy guard? You, because I think you're going to maybe eat that coral to the face. If we can get another stun here, we would be incredibly lucky. But at this point in the fight, I don't really feel comfortable... Wow, all right. Huh. I, yeah, I don't really feel comfortable transforming right now. I don't think that's a good idea. I cannot believe my brilliant idea of having the Houndmaster guard the occultist. One, I do just want to say it was right, because who did, who did the Arbalest attack? I mean, none other than the aforementioned... Uh, what are you? Occultist. Good grief. So, I was right, but I'm not happy that I was right. That said, again, even if things didn't turn out exactly the way we wanted, and they didn't, at least we were acting... Ooh. Ooh. ooh -hoo. At least we were acting thoughtfully, and we, we had a plan in mind. We executed on it. It wasn't precisely the plan, or it, things didn't go precisely according to plan, but I was a kindergarten teacher, all right? I lived the plan B, <laughs> especially because those kids really made me want to have a plan B on hand because I didn't want to have a kid like that. Am I right? That's, that joke really should have stopped before it even started, but any time thereafter, that probably would have been okay too. Yeah, plan B. You guys know what plan B is. You're, you're, you're grown-ups, except for, of course, my primary demographic of two to three-year-olds, but the rest of you... You, you knew where I was going with that. I didn't have to take it that far. I'm sorry. You, you, deserve, you deserve a better class of Let's Player. And I, I, I should take it upon myself to give that to you. This, this encounter, I feel like there's a solution to this encounter. Like, we can get out of this with maybe one attack against us. If we're careful. That's, there you go. I think that's part one. Part two. Okay, how do we how do we do this? I think we guard dog on you. Now we probably could have eaten the doggy treat, but I'm not I don't feel comfortable wasting a doggy treat for this. As okay, this is good. Now we've moved him up close him. enough that I'm not really worried about really anything that he can do to us. Can we get a kill? Not likely. Not at all, in fact. There we go. Okay. Now, all we have to do is uh, just have our big finish here. What do we need to do? What else? What else? Yeah, I've, I'm hooked. Like, I love this class. That's a lot of stress that we just ate, though. Like, double digits, I don't exactly feel comfortable with. Uh, maybe if I were... Thinking with uh, thinking with my smart brain, I might have I might have done things a little differently. But you know what? Cry havoc. Let's see if we can get some stress relief. Okay, I'll take it. Some of that? No, no, bad. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Well, I said I think we can get through this with one hit. If that's the one hit we take, I'll deal. That's not bad. That's a little unfortunate. And now I start to see the drawback to the, um... Yeah, now I, I start to see the drawback to the, to the, uh... What am I thinking here? The drawback to the, uh... Yeah, the, the high speed. How do we want to do this? I mean, does anything have a high crit chance? 6%? Like... Ah, okay, I got it. All right, we're going to transform and get our stress back. And then we're going to absolute. Absolutely. There you go. And then one of these, you did. And can we get some more stress relief? That would be amazing. I'll still take it. It's fine. This is good. I mean, we are now... Yeah, now 
we're we're now in a, a really good position. I feel like this we have a chance here to just maybe if if we fight a mini boss now, we have the best possible chance that we've ever had to win that fight. Like this is this is a party that this is a party that's going places. I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling pretty good. Maybe you can hear it in my voice. Um I probably always sound like this though, come to think of it. Like just kind of a shrill, obnoxious, grating, high pitched, strident, whiny boy. That and this is probably what I always sound like. But I want to let you know that this time it's 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 not just me, you know, battling a a twenty year long fight against puberty. This is actually I'm serious now. This is this is looking like this is looking like like a good uh, like a good solid possible victory here. All right, I think we swing here, and I think this is where we burn the treat. So let's see, twenty three. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. I mean, we could just take our guaranteed kill. We've got good dodge back here. Yeah, let's just take the guaranteed kill. And then we'll have this... Okay, so this guy's up in front, and we'll have a goodish chance at uh, maybe inflicting a, a bit more hurt in, uh, next round when uh, when our, our Houndmaster gets another gets another shot. Okay. Alright. Alright, we're gonna have to have a talk here. Alright, so we're gonna transform, but I feel like I'm starting to get this combat morphin thing. I, I think I'm starting to, to get the hang of it. Because look, this guy's not gonna hurt that much. Bayonet jab, ah, it's not that not that devastating. That's devastating though. I do want to make that clear. That is that is specifically devastating. Precision and power. But somehow again we're just managing to to skate by executed. getting treated much better than we deserve by a As game that mount, very so deservedly has a reputation for difficulty. So let's start talking about compromises. Where are we gonna where are we gonna compromise? Alright, we'll eat here, take that. Um Ditch the herbs. Ditch the keys. There we go. Okay, and holy fountain. Wait, who's going to get it? You know what? I think we can get a negative quirk removed this way. Or maybe it's a positive quirk. Okay, no. That's all right. We needed the healing. Stress relief is good, too. This is, this is good. And our scouting is it's that's pretty positive this is letting me know that we're heading the right direction at least insofar as as getting the fat loot and such is concerned all right um i think we just take our best shot at the disarm here since everybody has good to great uh stress right now health is good no sense taking risks so what do I think of the, what do I think of the, um, the abomination so far? I will remember. I swear to you, I will remember what it's called. Uh, we don't need to go this way. Well, let's go, let's go far enough. Let's go far enough to see if we have like an option for maybe a, a shrine. Like I'll take a shrine here if if we can. We're we're in position now to do it. The hunger scares me a little bit, but we're in position now to potentially take on a shambler and and crush it. So let's let's at least avail ourselves to that opportunity. But what do I think of the abomination? Dang, wish I hadn't ditched my herbs. I think the abomination is a very good class. I think it's very good and has the potential to even be great. The damage is very real. And honestly, you don't concede... I mean, you concede damage by having the Abomination run around in human form. You concede a lot of damage, and I'll concede that. But what really makes the Abomination stand out compared to something like... I feel like picking on the Jester is 
not fair. So let's say the, okay, let's say the Plague Doctor, because, you know, they're similar. They have Blight damage, they have stuns. The AoE stun of the Plague Doctor has, you know, very specific targeting, whereas the Abomination's Even stun the targeting is both, on it's, I mean, it's versatile, and it also has the ability to, like, Actually, this would have been a nice time for the doggy treat. Um, but it's, vers it's versatile, but it also has... Um, yeah, it also has the ability to... Um, yeah, always be useful. Because the Plague Doctor... Like, her... Her AoE, about halfway through the fight, is not good anymore. It's it's just not. All of... By, by the halfway point in the battle... All of your enemies should have moved to the front row, which means that you're not going to be getting that big benefit um, from yeah from the uh, from the plague doctor, especially if you're using her dots, which are going to be clearing out ugh, which are going to be clearing out a lot of those um, those corpses for you. And I think she also it's been so long since I've used her. But I think she does also have the ability to, um, like, clear out, um, yeah, I think she also has the ability to clear out, uh, corpses with, a with this ability that she has, I think, I think. Uh, how do we want to do this? So, yeah, all of that just tends to push enemies into the front rows, right? It pushes enemies um, out of her out of her most effective range of what I think is her most effective skill. That's, I mean, that's bad, right? That's really, really, really terrible. Um, her attack is her regular attack. Her incision is good, but I would I would go so far as to say that. With the base damage that the Abomination has, Manacles has competitive has a competitive damage total. It might not be exactly on par, but I think it's competitive. Hopefully, we don't fight a big fat skeleton here. That would suck. Um, I'm still not thrilled. Um, but yeah, the that's really unfortunate. Yeah, the. The Plague Doctor has utility. I mean, it's impossible to say that she doesn't. She has utility to spare. There's no question about that. She has healing. She has dots. She has everything under the sun, really. And the Abomination, other than the healing, is pretty similar in that respect. The Abomination has stun, has dots, has big damage. But the fact that you don't have to burn a turn to choose in between that effectively gives him six skills at all times for you know the cost of stress going one way but healing going the other like a self heal is an incredible asset and you know what just to prove just to prove a point yeah the self healing that he gets at the end of combat regardless is just incredible so yeah, I, I think he's really got a lot going for him. Please dodge it. Not happy. Not happy. So, yeah, no question. I think the Abomination has the potential to be the new hotness. Now, how do we want to do this? I think she's going to... Hmm. I think she's going to... I don't think Yup... Iron Swan's not going to get a kill back here, is it? Okay, so I think we need to just help her out. So the Iron Swan does get a kill, and we're not going to have to deal with that nastiness happening to us again. Now, this could... did suck, but as long as... Yeah, as long as we get one attack here, I think we're going to be all right. I think we can possibly push this Bone Bulwark back. Oh, I love the alliteration. That's great. We can push the Bone Bulwark back and put it out of effective range even if we can't kill it. Uh, as long as we do not 
get a, um, yeah, as long as we don't get a kill, like a crit kill here. So let's try that. Get back, get back. You don't know me like that. I came, I saw, I hit him right dead in the jaw. Um, how do we proceed from here, though? Maybe we just start chipping away. Really? You could have knocked me over with a feather. I am actually surprised that that happened. Um, darn it. I think now he can, he can attack. Okay, it's a weak attack. Okay, I, I do remember that he used to just have to pass, but I know that they've they've really tried to minimize um, those sorts of those sorts of uh, attacks. Um, yeah, I think him attacking would be a bit of a waste, and he's gonna get healing. So how about you? We've been getting good heals, but this this combat has been dragging on and on and on. So let's uh, let's try and get out of this um, a little bit better than we we currently look. Is this what better is supposed to look like? Uh, I would submit that it is not. This is okay. This is not well. When I said this is okay, I want to be clear. That is not what I meant. This is not okay. This is going on way too long, and we're just kind of fumbling around like idiots right now. That said, I think we still cry havoc. And rake. Uh, not great. Not great. Well, I want to apologize because this battle must have been boring as hell and frustrating to watch <laughs> because I know I didn't handle it right. I know I didn't handle it right. And yeah, we had to we had to trade our our damage at a very high premium here. I mean, we had our damage pretty well pretty well uh taken care of uh right up until that fight. Um what do we get rid of? Like, nothing. I don't want to ditch the torches, obviously, because we are going to still try and, even though things look dire right now, I think we are still going to try and fight a Shambler if, if the opportunity presents itself. But, yeah, this, this, is, this is still manageable. And with a couple traps this way, we actually do have an opportunity for our best detrapper to our best trap disarmer, our best trap guy to get some of that, yeah, some of that huge stress that he accumulated. Just tick some of that off. This is a really good chance for us to get back fighting fit if we can if we can turn this into if we can sort of ride this momentum and take advantage of the opportunities that this particular dungeon layout is affording us. One more, maybe two more fights. I'm going to take a drink of sweet water. Mmm, delicious. All right, so one more fight. Have a treasure chest. Whew, whew, all right. No problem, <laughs> no problem, we got this covered. We planned the exact amount of resources we needed, deliberately, of course. But that, like this, this went well. This is good. This is a good thing. So let's just uh, eat up, fix this. Everything else looks good. In case we run into a fatty, I think this is probably the better course of action. This should be easy. This should be really simple. And as a matter of fact, to save on stress, I'm actually not going to. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually not going to morph. Even though it's honestly probably not that bad of an idea to do so. I think that playing a little bit more conservatively might yield a a equal, if not better, outcome. I think it gives us. A better chance to get a better outcome out of this, if that makes any sense. 
and so far so good. I mean, the more stress that we can get, that we can eliminate in a single turn, or in this single combat, the better. So let's, uh, yeah, let's ride this momentum. Things are looking good right now. I hope that we can get, yes, one more opportunity for some stress relief, and as long as we don't get critted, we're in great shape. And look at us. Like, our occultist now is back in just precisely the right shape that you'd want him to be in for a run right after this one. So, look at that. It was not an inspiring start, but I dare say it was an inspiring finish. I like that. That was good. And all this to say, I think the Abomination, I think the Abomination has surmounted sort of that weird, awkward, hybrid class, sort of specialist, sort of not. I think it has surmounted that obstacle and really has not, not come into its own because it hasn't had to. It just is an amazing standalone class purely on its own merits. So... Good on ya, Red Hook. I love the Abomination. More than the Houndmaster? It's close. It's closer than I'd like to admit. But we did it. That was a great run. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for watching. I'm going to continue trying to do daily updates right up until we get our Abomination up to level 6. So I hope you stay tuned at the very least until we get that roster goal cleared out. Look at that. It's even alphabetically right there in front, right there for us to see. All right, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.